Tim Ferriss posted a comment on his community on YouTube. To paraphrase Jim Lower, the power broker in your life is the voice that no one ever hears. How well you revisit the tone and content of your private voice is what determines the quality of your life. It is the master storyteller and the stories we tell ourselves are our reality. For instance, how do you speak to yourself when you make a mistake that upsets you? Would you speak that way to a dear friend when they've made a mistake? If not, you have work to do. And trust me, we all have work to do. So thank you, Tim, for posting this. I've talked about this journal in other videos, but the first part of this journal and a whole bunch of this journal was about goals. And I have lots and lots of journals for goals. Somewhere about three fourths of the way through this, uh, I start writing something called the Manifesto of Mediocrity, where I overwrite my goals. Uh, and I, I say terrible things to myself. Being unique, having a personality, doing things differently are all just a big waste of time. In the end, you appear unprofessional, disorganized, and you stand out from the crowd. Standing out from the crowd is unsafe. And if you do happen to have success, don't share it. I mean, it's, it's pages and pages of stuff like this. By sharing my thoughts, I'm actively in the way of letting other people do their work and live their lives. My thoughts are better kept to myself. If the thoughts are big and grandiose about big ideas and big plans, they are only discouraging to other people. It's pages and pages of stuff like this. It makes me so sad that a notebook filled with so much hope about what was and would be possible in my life, the life of a dreamer, will be ending up with a documented proof of me giving up on my dreams. Am I being dramatic? F you. No, I'm not being dramatic. Fuck my creativity and I will just live by the manifesto of the mediocre living life as others do that good enough is good enough. Anyway, I have journals like this. One of the techniques I learned for myself and kind of invented for myself in 2013, 2014, when life really got bad, some really negative things happened in life. And one of the techniques I learned was actually to document my own voice and to not take it as truth but to observe it, to, to both be it and then take a step back and observe it. So there's the me that's experiencing the me and then there's the me that's like watching me experience the, the thing as like a movie. I'm watching me experience this and I'm watching this character. So you can be the person in the thing having the experience, but you can also be the person who steps back from the thing. So I commented on this quote from Tim Ferriss and from Jim Lair. And I said, recently I've returned to a technique that I learned a while ago. I've been voicing the dark side of the negative internal downward spiral voice. I've been doing this both in written text and out loud, using the tone, timbre, and volume of the voice when I hear when I'm being criticized within. But rather than taking it as truth, what happens by getting it out is that I can watch and hear and observe the voice. And through the observation, I can much more easily come to knowing that it's a choice, that I'm actively choosing to listen to it or I can choose something else. Alfred DeLuis, 1605, this video is really for you. You should make a video about this that seems very interesting and beneficial. So I actually made sort of a meta experience of this thing because I'm like, I don't really know if I should. I don't know if these techniques, blah, 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 right? So what I did for this video is listed out all the reasons why I'm hearing in my head not to make this video. Three steps that are six questions. So we're gonna talk about the three steps that are six questions to overcome this negative downward spiral voice and then to basically get what you want in a situation, to create what you want, to produce something, to not listen to this voice that's saying, oh, you never, blah, 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 that stupid voice, right? That voice that we all have that wants to hide our light. There's a, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, right? I overwrote those lyrics. There's a video on YouTube here about me overwriting those lyrics in the same time period in 2010, 2011, where I actually wrote new lyrics to the song. This little light of mine ain't got time to let it shine. It goes on and on. Okay, here's the thing. Three steps, six questions. So the three steps are, what are the voices that I'm hearing? What are the voices that I'm hearing? Write them down, identify them, voice them, speak them out loud. Write them down first, then speak them out loud. And if you hear it in a voice, I hear it in like a demon devil voice. So I'm gonna do that in this video. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, is it true? Is this true? And there's other questions around that, but is this true? And the third thing is, what happens if I do it anyway? So what are the voices that I'm hearing? Is it true? And what happens if I do it anyway? What are the voices that I'm hearing is just one question. So is it true? If the answer is yes, then how do I know that that's true? So that's the question 2A, and I'll list these out so that you've got them. And then three, what happens if I do it anyway, has two questions underneath it. The two questions are, what's the worst that could happen? Because you have to identify that. You have to 
talk through that. But then I got this other question from my wife. The question she rephrased that has meant a lot to me in life is what's the best that could happen? Of course, identify what's the worst that could happen, but also what's the best that could happen? What's the best that could happen if I just do this thing, right? Even if I do it at half of my current ability, even if I just get it out into the world, even if I just make the thing, even if I just make this video right now, what's the best that could happen? So let's start with what are the voices that I'm hearing for making this video right now? Well, the voices I'm hearing right now, see this see this roof behind me? This is in our house. We remodeled this house, but we never finished my office space upstairs. We got downstairs done. We got the main level done. We've never done the upstairs. Right, so this this back here, well, that could be distracting to you. That I need to paint, I need to blah, right? Then here's the other thoughts. This is what I'm hearing literally right now as I'm making this video, is that thought. But then I also have, well, my thoughts on this aren't developed enough. I, I don't really have time to get all my thoughts out effectively. Editing video takes so much time to do it well. No one will want to watch unless I put together a really professional video. And it has to have flying graphics, and uh, I have to have overlay text, and... Oh, I have to make video thumbnails and I have to write descriptions and all of that takes so much time. And oh, I have to post to YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and LinkedIn and Snapchat. And each of those requires its own formatting. And I don't have time for all of that because I got to work. I got to do my work. I got to show up. I got to earn. I got to, you know, I got to provide. I got to, what if all of this goes really well? And what if people actually want more from me? Uh, I don't know if I can handle that, right? What if, what if I get it suddenly like it really does do well, right? All of those voices. All those voices. Are any of those voices true? That's the question. Second question. Is it true? I mean, maybe, right? What if this does really go well and people want more from me? I don't know if I can handle that. Well, that might be true, but maybe I just go through each one of these. My thoughts on this aren't developed enough. Honestly, I've had 15 years to develop these thoughts. Yeah, they're, they're pretty well developed. Uh, I don't have time to get all of my thoughts out effectively. I mean, what else do you have but time, dude? Well, you've got to work and you got to, you got hours, you got to show up and, and do the, do the stuff that you do every day. Yeah, that's true, but like, how long is this really going to take to get my thoughts out in a way that could benefit other people? Well, it took me like five minutes to put down some thoughts this morning in a Google Keep document, which I'm reading from right now. And now I'm, I'm 10 minutes into this video, but honestly, I'm probably going to edit a bunch of this out. Editing video takes so much time to do it well. Yes, that's true. Absolutely true. I know that's true because I've spent 10 years editing video. Does it have to be perfect though? No, probably not. And there's tools like Descript that let you edit video now just by like deleting words and it actually edits the video. It's so much faster. So yeah, I've got Descript as a tool. I pay for it. Why am I not using it? No one will watch unless I put together a really professional video with flying graphics and overlay text. Is that true? Maybe, maybe some people won't, right? But you're proof if you're watching this video right now that somebody will watch this video and it will be beneficial to somebody. So great. Is this microphone working right now? I don't know. I honestly don't know if it's picking up this microphone or if it's picking up from the camera microphone. Is that a problem? No. There's a free tool I can use from Adobe to improve the audio to make it better. So fine, I'll use that. I can also use Descript's audio improver when I upload, put the video into Descript and edit it. Um, now I have to post the video to YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and LinkedIn and Snapchat and all of these requires its own formatting and I don't have time for all that. Well, it might be true that I don't have time for all that. Are there people who could help me with that? Yeah, probably. Do I have to post it to all those places? No, probably not. Right? Could I come back and take all of the YouTube videos that I've uploaded over the almost 20 years I've been uploading videos to YouTube? Could I come back and edit all those videos later and make them perfect for Instagram and Facebook and TikTok? Probably not perfect, but probably, yeah, I could probably hire somebody to help with that or whatever, right? But the most important thing is just getting it out and getting it done. Well, what if all this goes really well and people want more from me? I don't know if I can handle that. Probably a legitimate fear, right? I would love to be super helpful to a huge number of people. And what that's going to mean is that a huge number of people will message. A huge number of people will respond. A huge number of people will reply. But even more than that, 10x the number of people will be benefited by me sharing it. And what is the chain of impact by me not sharing it? But is it true? And how do I know that it's true? Are questions I probably got from Brene Brown. But the other parts of this, what happens if I do it anyway? That, that's mine. You know, that came from me. Probably comes from somewhere higher, right? Probably comes from a greater source than me helping me think through this other voice that comes in. So I've gone through my questions that I listed. There's like a hundred more, right? Is it true that nobody will watch the video if I haven't edited my background here to make it perfect? Probably not, right? <laughs> Probably not. And in future videos, I'm, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to get my office squared away so that it can actually be a great place for producing video because I've wanted to do this for almost 20 years. It's insane. 
and I've got a thousand videos up here. I've learned a lot about video editing, but I mean, I want to really make this a thing. And so is it true? How do I know if that's true? Those are my questions. And the third thing, what happens if I do it anyway? Maybe nothing, right? Maybe I upload this video and maybe like 10 people watch it. Maybe I upload this video and it goes viral and like a million people watch it. How amazing would that be? I have no idea. You cannot control the outcome. Someone just got me a book by... Rick Rubin, who produced all these artists over all these years. And it's really a very cool book. It's called The Creative Act, A Way of Being. You can open the book to a page. But the most recent thing I read in there is like, you can't control the outcome. Just produce your art. Your art wants to come through you in some way, right? So I'm sharing this message because this is something that wants to come through me and I'm blocking it because of all these other concerns. No, what happens if I do it anyway? Maybe one person benefits from my structure that I've developed to help me overcome this negative downward spiral right and and if one person benefits has it been worth it yeah because what does that one person mean in the lives of the people they impact it's it's limitless right but if i don't share it what is the negative downward spiral result of that and what have i neglected by not fully it doesn't even matter right what have i neglected it matters what i'm doing today Right. So, so 3A, what's the worst that could happen? Well, I mean, maybe, so here's the voices coming in again, right? What's the worst that could happen? Well, let's identify that. Let's friggin' write it out. Well, I could butterfly affect the whole world in a bad way, right? I don't think that's going to happen. My intent, in, we're going to talk, I'm going to make videos about intent because I've become very, very clear about intention and that that's what separates us from AI. AI will be able to do literally everything else within 10 years. I, I firmly believe that both with robotics and with AI in 10 years, we will have the technology to have AI and robotics handling pretty much all aspects of our lives. Now, whether or not we actually use that, I don't know. That's anybody's guess. But what continues and what will continue to separate us from AI is our intent. So my intent that I'm bringing to this is to have a positive impact. But could I impact the world in a bad way in some way by sharing something in here that inadvertently gets received in a way that I don't intend? Could that happen? Yeah, that could happen. Can I control that? Nope. Can't do a darn thing about that. All I can do is share my message in the best way that I know how with the information that I have at the time that I'm sharing it. So that's what I'm doing. I could also say or publish something that comes back to bite me later, right? I'm very concerned about that with these little tickle videos that I've made, right? I had no idea when I made the first two that it was like a whole fetishist thing. I had no idea. I don't know. I'm just oblivious to these things in life. And so somebody messaged me on Instagram with like a, on Instagram. I didn't put any of the tickle videos on Instagram, but somebody found me on Instagram and messaged me there with my message just made me feel like I never want to do another one of those videos ever again. That's so weird. So weird that somebody would just like randomly reach out with that message. It's okay that they did. It's just this is stuff I can't control, right? It's beyond my ability to control it. And I just have to accept that. I'm just putting my stuff into the world to bring joy, to bring light, to bring levity, to bring beauty, to bring what art I can bring to the world, the thing that I can bring in a unique way. And I just have to accept that like, some people are going to receive that however they receive it based on their experience. And I have no control over that. I can bring a very clear, very solid intent. And that's what makes me, me. That's what makes you, you. Okay, so that's what's the worst that could happen. Well, the worst that could happen is some pretty bad stuff. Legitimately, right? People could use my content as an excuse to back up their actions and receive what I'm saying in a way that I don't intend, but I cannot control that. I'm not in control of their choices. I, I tend to have this thing where I think if something good happens, then it's because they they took what I used and multiplied it and, and used it in their life. But if something bad happens, then I'm responsible for that. I'm at fault for that. I didn't even, I identified this in some journaling I was doing, like, what the freak? I'm responsible if something bad happens, but they get all the credit if something good happens? No, neither of those is true, right? I am sharing my stuff in the world. There are people who use Eminem's lyrics as a reason to go shoot somebody, right? There are people who use art that they see of death and destruction as a reason to go commit death and destruction or torture or rape or whatever, right? They use that as their... I can't control any of that. All I can do is bring a very clear, very solid, very beautiful intention to the world. And what comes out of that very solid intention is more good than not good. 
So what's the best that could happen? I could butterfly effect the whole world in a good way. One person could watch this video, get this structure, and they could hear their voices not just as like something they have to act on, but as something they could observe. And maybe giving them this structure. What are the voices that I'm hearing? Is it true? And what happens if I do it anyway? In a good way. With an intent to care for life. With an intent to help things grow. If you bring those intentions to the things that you're creating, what's the best that could happen? What happens if I do it anyway? And what's the best that could happen? One person might be impacted positively by me choosing to share my light. And if that happens, great. And if it doesn't happen, that's okay because I didn't go to my grave with all of this stuff still inside of me. Now, the richest place in the world is the graveyard. Don't let yourself go to the graveyard with your message still inside of you. The negative downward spiral will make that happen for you if you let it. So don't, don't let it. Go through the three steps. What are the voices that I'm hearing? List them out. Is it true? Are these voices true? Right? So there's you experiencing the thing. That's the first part. What are the voices that I'm hearing? Write them all out. Get into it. Express it in the way. Well, I have to post to YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and LinkedIn and Snapchat and all of those requires its own formatting and I don't have time for all. That's the voice I hear. Right? <laughs> right? Voice it. Express it. Right? I used to be a theater teacher a long time ago, a whole different lifetime ago. Is it true? Are any of those things true? Maybe some of them are true, right? What happens if I do it anyway? What's the best that could happen? And identify all of that and put it out. You can, you can do all of this in like three to five minutes, right? Sometimes it'll take you 30 minutes, but it's okay to get into those voices you have inside as long as you don't take them as the only truth. Right? There's the you that experiences the thing, and then there's the you that watches you experience the, the thing. And as long as you don't live only in the you that is experiencing the thing, but take time to take a step back and watch you also experience the thing, you can bring levity to the situation. You can bring lightness to the situation. You can take that darkness and expose it to some light and bring a whole new level of awareness to the situation. So I hope you'll go through these three steps anytime you're thinking, oh, I could create this thing. I could build this thing. I could make this thing. I could talk to this person. I could do this thing. Do the three steps. List out all the voices, all the negative blah, and then ask the questions. And I hope it helps you overcome the negative downward spiral, bring lightness to the world, and ultimately get everything you want from life. Oh, and if you like the video, like, subscribe, follow, do all the things. Should have said that earlier. But if you've enjoyed this, if this has been helpful for you in any way, please do comment. Please like, subscribe, do all the things that everybody tells you to do in all their YouTube videos. All right. I hope you enjoy an amazing and beautiful day.